So the pawpaw is the northernmost member of the custard apple family, and it's the only one that hiked north, you know, over hundreds of thousands of years, you know, on receding glaciers up to what we call modern day southern Ontario in Canada. And so basically it's a fully tropical fruit that grows in the cold of the north, and it's delicious. It's one of the best tropical fruits I've ever had. And I've traveled the world trying tropical fruits, all fruits everywhere. And I put the pawpaw, especially when you've got good genetics, select genetics, I put pawpaw up there as one of the best tasting fruits. And it's just, there's nothing else like it. There's no other tropical fruit that's growing, you know, wild and, <clears throat> or that you can cultivate, you know, in our, in our region. Um, <clears throat> so for, for, for those reasons alone, um, it's, it's miraculous and then it's gorgeous, you know, it's what I call an edible landscape all-star, uh, in the sense that it's, you know, it's, it's, it's got these beautiful tropical lobed leaves that really aren't that challenged by disease and insects. Um, it's very attractive, gorgeous fall foliage and then tasty fruit, you know, something you want to go out and get. Because I'm only in, I'm really like in, in permaculture, you know, we observe uh, what does well in your region and work with that energy. And for where I'm at, pawpaws are everywhere. So it's like, it's easy to say, okay, well, that energy's here. All I need to do, we really start bringing it out into the full sun, you know, create those conditions with, you know, generous deep mulches and, you know, passive water harvesting and swales and pull them out in full sun and get really good genetics. And I'm getting these gorgeous, large, you know, upwards of two pounds, you know, a piece pawpaws with very little seeds and delicious flavors in them. So it's like, it doesn't take a whole lot because that energy is already here. Yeah. Can you flip the you slide? Said, I've, said, I've got some you said, pictures in there. I, oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, but real quick uh, and feel free to jump in Lee with other comments or questions. Um, you said full sun. I've always heard it's, it's a shade tolerant species or it prefers to start its life in the shade. Is that true? Right. Right. So where you typically find it is in the woods or on the edge of the woods. And that's because it needs a certain amount of moisture for those big leaves, right? Anything with that big a leaf is going to be, you know, losing a lot of moisture. So if you're going to bring it out in full sun, you just need to create the conditions for that. Um, and, you know, like I say, that's windbreak, so they don't like strong winds. So if you're going to bring them out into the full landscape, make sure you have a windbroken spot or create those windbreaks to bring the pawpaws out in. Uh, deep mulch, you know, I do deep sheet mulching before I plant anything, ideally at least a season in advance. You know, I'm dropping eight to 10 inches of wood chips and straw and cardboard and newspaper and, you know, manure and I'm building that zone up. So it's a big sponge. So when I'm coming and planting my pawpaws into that, they have everything that they need and boom, they thrive. Now, there's a bit of a misnomer about pawpaws needing uh, shade for the first couple years of their life. I have proven by seed growing directly in full sun on my site uh, at the very base of Hugel culture beds, which have that sweet spot of, of having lots of humidity uh, and moisture nearby. But it's still a good idea to shade them the first couple of years because typically you're buying a pawpaw tree that has a tap root like a nut tree that does not like to be messed with. And typically when you're buying a pawpaw from somebody, it's been in a pot for a couple of years or it's been bare root dug, you know, rather rudely. And you've, you've compromised the, you know, the vitality of that plant. And when you plant that in full sun, usually without enough mulch and proper conditionings, that tree is stressed and, it, and the sun is gonna scald it and it's gonna, you know, it's gonna burn it down. And that's why people are like, yeah, you, you know, you, you need to have shade for the first couple of years, but it's a misnomer. And I say that so that people, cause a lot of people say, oh, I got pawpaws and I went and I planted them under my oak tree because that's where I thought you had to plant them. And then they're not going to get fruit or they're going to get very little fruit because you're only going to get fruit relative to how much light you get. And that, goes, I, that goes for all your fruits. If I could just interject some quickly. Uh, first of all, I, my experience with pawpaws is similar to Michael's, uh, you know, they do, well in full sun with mulch and you know as long as they have water you know it's similar to there's another fruit uh, blueberries which you know grow where i am throughout the woods and but they're in the shade and if you take these plants into the sun they bear much better because they need that sunlight to make fruit but they need to have uh, moist ground which uh my blueberry blueberries my is my best crop and uh and i have drip irrigation on them and one other thing about the and and Probably this is irrelevant now, but from what you said about the moisture, 
a lot of people when they say when pawpaws are young that they need shade so that if you plant them from seed but if you plant a grafted pawpaw that's actually mature wood that's gra- on the graft so if it was possible that that young pawpaws needed shade a grafted pawpaw is just like a grown-up one because it's it's mature wood that's grafted onto the rootstock and right. yeah. so whatever it doesn't need it does not need shade when it's young as long as it has good conditions um but lee did pawpaw make your top 10 list would you say is that up there you know i gotta be honest <laughs> That um, I have pawpaw trees still, but I sort of lost my taste for pawpaws. Oh. Which coincided with, uh, you know, nobody has, the nice thing about pawpaws is they are beautiful plants and they have little or no pest problems and they bear well. And the problem is, uh, one problem they can get, which I don't mind since I don't like pawpaws anymore, is uh, they get uh, the one pest I have, I don't know if Michael, you heard of this, the uh, peduncle borer. Yeah, I love the name Dunkle Boar. Sounds like a jo- sounds like a Doctor Zeus thing. Yeah, <laughs> Wait, I I think it came in on some sign with that I got that I was grafting. Mm-hmm. Uh, but since I got that, I get very few fruits. Uh-huh. And and uh, but like I said, I don't care. Yeah. Okay. So, so you, can, you, can you guys see this picture? Can you see this? Oh, yeah. Custard? Custard looking. So pawpaws have like a custard like consistency. And then when you've got really good genetics and you've got them picked at the right time, you're going to get, you know, aromatic notes of banana and mango, pineapple. You know, it's like a tropical medley uh, that comes out. Now, the difference between a wild, wild pawpaw that's not been selected, you know, could be that it's quite small, full of, you know, these large seeds, lima bean sized seeds and could have bitter notes. There are good wild pawpaws, but one of the reasons that we have a pawpaw festival every year is to is to help people get the first experience be, you know, the best it can be when you're you know when you're talking about, you know, cultivars of pawpaws picked, you know, at the right time versus what someone might find in the wild that's been fallen for five days and bitter and you know so trying to help people get the understanding of how awesome pawpaws can be. And, and as far as my personal view of pawpaws, I'm, I'm keeping my mind open. I don't think I have not tasted, for instance, any of the Peterson variety. Pawpaw. Ooh, well, you got to come down to the pawpaw fest, and Lee, you, you would be guest of honor. Um, it's a and, lot of fun. And on that, on that note, Michael, um, is it best for people to get seeds? from the preferred genetics or to do transplants or to do grafting? How would you yeah, suggest we I mean, forward? Seed, seeds, I mean, if you can get your hands on good seeds, you know, it's always good to be able to grow out your own seeds because then you can sort of, you know, control the conditions and making sure that you're getting that full root expression. There are some good resources and nurseries for pawpaws, but there are only a few. Um, yeah. I have them listed in my, in my book, For the Love of Pawpaws, um, you know, starting from, you know, my favorites on down. Um, but if you grow from seed, you want to, I mean, if you grow from select seedlings, so what, what are now being called select seedlings are seeds that come from grafted cultivars so that, you know, you have good genetic parents, so to say, right. And, oh, nice. Hey, represent. (laughs) And some book. Thank you, Lee. Um, highly recommended. Great. Hey, that's, Hey, can we capture that? Yeah. We'll Um, get a blurb. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And this, this, this image I have pulled up out of the, out of the, the new edition of the book as well. Um, but so select seedling will have good genetics in it. They'll come quite true to seed or to heredity, you know, meaning that they're going to be pretty much like their, their couple of parents, their two parents, which cross pollinated. And those seeds will produce pretty decent pawpaws, even if you did not graft them. Uh, but then, of course, grafting gives you the assurance of what you're getting. And, and I love Neil Peterson's pawpaws. Uh, you know, he's got some of the best of the whole collection that's out there. Uh, Susquehanna, one of my favorites, a very rich tasting pawpaw, if you like that. On the other end of the lighter side of pawpaw tasting is Shenandoah, uh, another one of Neil Peterson's. He named his pawpaws after U.S. rivers with indigenous names. Allegheny is a super favorite of mine. It falls right in the middle of that uh, taste spectrum and has a really nice consistency to it. Potomac has these large, I think I got a, I might have an image in here of some of those two pound, up to two pound uh, pawpaws are usually Potomac. 
Wow. And what's cool about them too is that they have a low seed to pulp ratio. So you're getting very few seeds. Some of Neil Peterson's are like 3% seed, and the rest is all that delicious pulp, right? With no bitter after no taste, which you can get in unselected or wild pawpaws. So it's it's like it's kind of like a crab apple to a golden delicious sometimes, you know, when you're talking about pawpaws. So uh, the, the experience can be quite vast. Um, and then, so let's talk about this map. This is the pawpaw possibilities. So, you know, it's hard to talk about zones when you're talking about plants because it's more about climate. It's more about, you know, what's your site like, you know, your rain, your soil, your wind exposure. So just because, you know, you can grow pawpaws in zone five doesn't mean they're going to do well everywhere there. But typically right. speaking, pawpaws are growing zone five to zone nine. And they're expanding themselves because, again, we're talking about a super adaptive species here. We're talking about a tropical species that hitchhiked itself all the way north, you know. So it's, it's still doing that. It's still expanding through human interaction now, uh, you know, in the northwest, Pacific Northwest, and, you know, across all the way down through the southwest. And then in, uh, in Europe, it's big now. Europe is pumping out pawpaws. There's a couple of huge nurseries there. And, it, and they are spreading the pawpaw love all over the place. Italy did research projects on pawpaws years ago. And there's one of their releases in the nursery trade. It's called Prima 1216. Um, North, South Korea has upwards of a million of them planted, partly just for their medicinal qualities. So we're talking a real phenomena here, you know, an international phenomena at this point. Um, and, but you really want to get those conditions right. And let me see, I think I have another slide that, that maybe... Um, brings that to life some of these conditions yeah let me let me pull this one up and so when it comes to pawpaws again you don't want the strong wind you want good drainage so another misnomer you find with pawpaws a lot of times is people think oh you they grow by the creeks you know they, they like it wet no you cannot plant pawpaws in wet soil the roots will ferment and rot they need drainage Oftentimes you'll see them on the banks, the stream banks, where they're going to drain. But they love having all that humidity around them, and they like a moist soil. But they don't want to be in wet soil, so keep that in mind. If you have a very, very wet site, you know, do some huliculture mounds or swales. You know, create the bump up to plant your pawpaws in. Um, and then average 12 feet of spacing, you know, that, that's designed for neglect. If you never prune or come back or do anything, they'll still fit. You want them to be within 20 feet of each other, ideally, for cross-pollination. You know, they're, they're pollinated by flies, beetles, gnats, you know, all these shady characters. So you, you want to boost, you know, the opportunity for that cross-pollination. And my food forests, I combine uh, other things that flower at the same time to create more energy during the pawpaw flowering, which is now. And so I've got gummies flowering. I've got June berries flowering. Um, you know, I've got my running comfrey uh, flowering like crazy everywhere. So it's creating more activity. And I think that helps me with my pawpaw um, pollination. Some people will put their dog poop out there, their compost, you know, <laughs> roadkill, you know. I don't want to sell it that way, but it's like you just want to try and get, you know, more of that fly activity. But uh, I have no problems with it. You can also hand pollinate, which is, you know, something that actually works really well. Uh, with pawpaws. Again, full sun if you have it. <clears throat> partial sun, partial fruit, it works. I mean, they'll grow in the deep shade too, but they'll usually sucker <clears throat> and create a colony and propagate themselves that way versus through seed. Um, I find some tend to sucker more than others, but uh, in full sun, uh, I don't find it to be much of an issue, not, not a big issue. I come around and snip the few that, uh, that do pop up. Um, but a lot of people have existing patches of pawpaws and what i recommend there is thinning them out so you got a good 12 feet between everything um, yeah. and try to get more sun to them to get some fruit this is my experience as a teacher a couple of thousand people over 30 some years. Everyone is moved by this. Virtually everyone is moved. And many, many, many people, maybe even the majority, have a life transforming experience when they encounter it. It's like uh, there's no going back. There is no going back. It's like you went right through the looking glass.